Welcome and good morning to another masked service. Ah, yes, here we are. We're gathered here this morning on a beautiful day. My name's Mary Ann Yule. I've been um, active in the church for too many decades to even recall, but um, I wanted to welcome you as well as the delightful Reverend Harry Stock, uh, who uh, reminded me this morning this is his fourth. Um, gig with us, and uh, and we we thank him for making the trek from Waldorf to be with us this morning. Um, we'll begin with the call to worship, and we'll read responsively. We gather on this holy day. Quiet and raised. We gather around a font and a table. We gather around an ancient story. We gather around the Holy Spirit. Almighty and gracious God, since our whole salvation stands in our knowledge of your Holy Word, pour, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, that our hearts may be freed from the chains of sin, so that we may hear and receive your word, recognizing your gracious will for us. Teach us by scripture to love and serve you with delight, praising and glorifying you in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our opening hymn is number 260, verses 1 and 4. We know that we have not lived as God hopes, but however fragmented we become, God longs to hold us together in grace and peace. Let us come with our prayers of confession and need to the one who prepares the way for our words. In these moments, remembering God, we bring to you all the ways we have not lived as your people. We stand by watching while those in need struggle to survive. We cast our lots with those who worship power and success. We offer words to those who care for us. We scoff at your words, which call us to a different lifestyle. Forgive us, God of mercy, for not knowing what we do to you to others, to ourselves. Speak to us through Jesus Christ, our King and our Savior, who bears words filled with your tender mercy and gracious hope.
This is the good news. God remembers. Not our sins, not our foolish lives, not our rebellion. God remembers us and redeems us. Thanks be to God. We are forgiven. Amen. Good morning. Such a joy to be back here with you again, to to worship with you. This is the time you know that we take time to um, speak to all of you children who are at home. And I brought something today. It's a little box. It looks a little fancy, I know. But it's a, a box that maybe your parents may have in a drawer somewhere. They may have one of these at home, but it's a a box that has um, little note cards inside. Really fancy little note cards, and they also have matching envelopes, and these are little nice blue envelopes that go with the note card. Now, people used to use note cards an awful lot, and us older people still do, but today, Note cards are getting really hard to find. So probably you and your parents and your sisters and brothers and everybody else you know uses the computer. You you text a thank you or you send a thank you by email. And and it's getting harder and harder to find those note cards, but there's nothing like a nice handwritten note. But you know what? Note cards may be old fashioned and they may be out of date to some people, but you know what is out of date? Always make sure that you give thanks. When someone does something nice for you, you should always thank them. Next week, you'll probably be be gathering with your mom and your dad and your family at your house. You'll probably have a big meal. Next week on Thursday, it's Thanksgiving. That's when our whole country gets together and they offer thanks to God for all the blessings. That's the important thing. You probably know, each one of you, when God blesses you. You have a lot of blessings. You have your mom and your dad, your grandparents maybe, your friends, people who love you, sisters and brothers, or your teachers. And you know what? It doesn't take a special day for you to thank God for the blessings that God gives you. All you have to do is, wherever you are, sit down and close your eyes and just say, thank you, God for my blessings. You could say whatever that blessing is. Thank you, God, for my mom. Thank you, God, for my dad. Thank you, God, for my sisters or my brothers. Thank you, God, for my teachers. Thank you, God, for all the good things that you do in my life. The important thing is always thank someone when they do something nice for you, and always make sure that you thank God when God does things for you. And all of us here today in the church, we thank you for joining us. We know that you're not here with us in the church, but we're very blessed to know that you're home watching us and joining us in worship. So God bless you and happy Thanksgiving. I invite all the children who are watching uh, from a distance and any children who are here this morning to now get on to Zoom or come to the Sunday School Room. We're going to be talking about Amos this morning. Amos is a prophet who reminded people that they need to share what they have to the less fortunate. So. Have fun.
Our prayer of illumination follows. Revealing God, attune all of our senses in this present moment to hear and perceive the good news for our lives. Amen. Our prayer, our hymn of illumination is hymn uh, 331, verses 1 through 4. You may stand if you're able. seated. Psalm 27 and 29 is to be read responsively. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evil persons advance against me to cause me harm, they will stumble and fall. One thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. I am confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. The Lord sits enthroned over the people. The Lord is enthroned as king forever. The word of the Lord. I was thinking this week how we take for granted the ways we identify someone. I mean, think about it. We can identify people through a variety of ways, can't we? From a far distance, we can identify a person just by sight. I can look up there and see it, recognize and identify Patty. <laughs> we can almost always identify someone by their voice. And more than not, we can identify someone by their handwriting. We can also identify someone by their title. Today is Christ the King Sunday, so we can identify Jesus as King. But I want you to listen for a moment to a passage of scripture that identifies Jesus in other ways. Our gospel is taken from the seventh chapter of the gospel accounts of Mark, verses 31 through 37. Then Jesus left the vicinity of Tyre and went through Sidon, down to the Sea of Galilee and into the region of the Decapolis. While there, some people brought to him a man who was deaf and was mute, and they begged him to place his hand on the man. After he took him aside away from the crowd, Jesus put his fingers into the man's ears. Then he spit and touched the man's tongue. He looked up to heaven and with a deep sigh and said to him, Epapatha, which means be opened. At this, the man's ears were opened his tongue was loosened, and he began to speak plainly. Jesus commanded them not to tell anyone, but the more he did so, the more they kept talking about it. People were overwhelmed with amazement. He has done everything well, they said. 
He even makes the deaf hear and the mute talk. This is the gospel of our Lord. <clears throat> That's a pretty powerful story, isn't it? It identifies Jesus as a healer, but it also identifies him as a man of compassion. But I wonder, who do you identify with in this story? There are actually three characters. First, we have Jesus himself. Second, we have those who brought the deaf man to Jesus. And third, we have the deaf mute man. When I read this gospel passage, it caused me to think about someone I knew many, many years ago. I only knew him as Mo. I never really knew his full name or his real name. I just knew him as Mo. In fact, all the years I knew him, I never heard anyone else ever call him by any other name but Mo. And I never really knew how old he was, although I always suspected that he was much older than he looked. I was familiar with Mo for many years when I was a disc jockey in West Virginia. I had my own radio show and I used to hold dances in the community center gymnasium on Saturday nights and it wasn't unusual for up to 800 teenagers and young adults to pack into the dance floor doing dances like, see if you recognize these, the monkey, the twist, the shag, the swim or some other line dance of the month, whatever it was. But many of the teenagers came to the dances, used to call Mo Dummy Mo or Stupid Mo. And they would often tease him and taunt him because they knew that Mo was different. You know, however, that never stopped Mo from coming to the dances. He was my friend and Mo knew it. Mo was deaf and as a result, he could barely speak. And when he did, it was very difficult to understand what he was saying. Today, Mo would be referred to as mentally challenged. Back then, they just called him a retard. Mo was always the first one to the dances. He would be at the stage door entrance when I arrived to help me unload my equipment and set up for the dance. And during the dance, I used to be up on a stage and I could look down on the crowd. I would always know when Mo was being teased or when someone was ready to play a prank on him. He always came to the dances with his pockets filled with little gifts, and he used to walk around give, giving them out like chewing gum to people that he knew was his friends. However, when I saw Mo scurrying towards the stage, I knew he was about to be picked on by someone. Like I said earlier, Mo was deaf, but I'll tell you something. He could read lips fiercely. He knew what you were saying from across the room and learned how to judge people's body postures and their eye signals. And his disappearance from the dance floor usually meant he would be heading for the stage to seek sanctuary and stand at his friend Harry's side to help Harry play his music. I learned earlier that he enjoyed this immensely so I would go through the stacks of the records and I'd put the newest and the most popular ones on the top of the stacks. And periodically, I would ask Mo to pick out the next record, Mo. And he would just eagerly reach down and pick a record and hand it to me and with a smile of delight in his face, wait for me to play his choice. Now this might go on for maybe 15 minutes until he would head back down onto the dance floor until again, he was picked on, and my assistant would quickly return to the stage. It was nothing for Mo to make an appearance on that stage at least 10 or 15 times during the night. He knew that I allowed him to be on that stage with me any time he wanted to come up there without question. And as a result of that, I will never forget one particular night. It was again a Saturday night one of the largest dances we ever held with over a thousand teenagers packed into the gymnasium 
we had one of the hottest recording artists at that time, Smokey Robinson and the Miracles. And the radio station where I had my show was broadcasting live and the local television station was there to cover that show. Well, here I am, I'm standing up on the stage, over a thousand young people pressing against the stage, Smokey Robinson and the Miracles waiting in the curtains to be introduced, the lights on the dance floor dim. I began my introduction and all of a sudden there's a gasp from the thousand kids and then everybody breaks out into laughter. Here comes Mo, eyes wide open, and I think with the biggest smile I ever saw on his face, walking across the stage to stand next to his friend Harry because he knew he was allowed. And I must admit, I felt some panic. At first, I really wasn't sure what to do. We were broadcasting live and the local television station had already begun filming. So I put my arm over Mo's shoulder I mentioned some of Smokey Robinson and the Miracles hits, and then I asked Mo if he was ready to see one of his most favorite recording artists, and he said yes. And I asked him who that was, and he proudly, and I must point out, very clearly yelled out, Smokey. And with that I said, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together and let's help Mo welcome to the stage Smokey Robinson and the Miracles. And as the kids were cheering, Mo took hold of my arm and we walked off the stage. I'll tell you something, my friends, I had hundreds of dances, met many recording artists, but I will always remember that dance because of Mo. I will always remember my friend Mo. I have no idea where he is now. That was 50 years ago, but I'm grateful that God brought Mo into my life all those years because he really brought me so much joy, and I'm grateful that God continues to give me such warm memories of my deaf friend. And you know what? You know something? In our gospel story this morning, Jesus came across a fellow just like Mo, someone who was deaf mute, someone who was different from the other people, someone who had probably been picked on by the other people and made fun of just like Mo. And I'd be willing to bet that most of the people in the region of the Decapolis knew that fellow just like the kids who came to the dances knew Mo. They probably watched him grow up and like Mo, to some of these people, he was probably an outcast. He was probably just a problem to him. You know, you know what I'm saying. The kind of people that we are around and we just accept them. We accept that they are there, knowing that they will always be around, but we kind of ignore them. They're an embarrassment to us. So we shun them or maybe laugh when someone makes fun of them. Or maybe once in a while we make fun of them ourselves so that we'll fit in with the crowd. But our gospel tells us that some people took action to try to help this deaf mute man. While others may have teased him and made fun of him, there were others who realized his isolation the loneliness and the sense of always being on the outside that this man must have felt. They must have sensed how it was to have thought to share and love to express, and they knew that this man just couldn't do that. They must have known what it meant to want desperately to be included in the fun and companionship, but only to be ignored by other people. Perhaps these people knew what it meant to be barely considered a human being and often treated more like a freak of nature than a person. I really like our gospel message this morning. It's one of my favorites. It's a lesson on how God wants us to treat other people. We're given in this gospel an example to follow. The people who brought that man to Jesus gives us someone to identify with. And the story confirms how God is. That God no notices the loneliness, 
that God feels our hurts, that God knows our isolations, and that we should notice and feel the same loneliness, the same hurts, and the same isolations of others who are out there and that we come into contact with, no matter their differences, whatever those differences may be. One of the things I find exciting about this story is that, you know, Jesus didn't consider this man just a case. He considered him as an individual. The man had a special need and a special problem. And with the most tender considerateness, Jesus dealt with him in a way that spared this man's feelings. And in a way that that man could understand. And in a way that that man could feel important. And I think that we too are called to the same considerateness when coming to the aid of others, sparing their feelings, and in our helping them, making them feel good about themselves and making them feel like they are somebody and they are important. We can't escape. But all of the gospel accounts of Jesus that we read in the Bible are quite clear. Jesus had a very big place in his heart for those who were different. He had a place in his heart for those who were different. The deaf mute, the crippled, the blind, the mentally ill, the downtrodden, those who were different, those who were beaten in life's ditches. Do you know someone like that? Jesus took special notice of these people and he helped them. He did something. Sympathy for them was not enough. He didn't just feel sorry for them and just put up with them by ignoring them. He did something for them and he teaches us to do the same. But for some, it's sad because of all of our busyness and all of the pressures of our day. It's so easy for us to become thick-skinned and hard-nosed and fail to even notice those around us who are different. Those around us who would be so blessed by our just not noticing them, but by our also acknowledging them for who they are. Jesus noticed. Jesus acknowledged. Jesus helped. The question is that we need to ask ourselves is, do we notice? Do we acknowledge? Do we help? Do we look at this gospel story as just an, another story of the past, or do we look at it as a story with a message for us today? Sure, you know the answer to that question. We look at it as a story with a message for us today. And we each one of us, the true body of Christ in the world, you and I, we are called to see the community of God at large. We're called to see all of God's people as being equal. We are called to see them differently than what others may see them. We are called to see them as someone to care for, not as an opportunity to manipulate or make fun of or tease. We're called to identify Christ in them, no matter their differences, and we are called to see them as a golden opportunity to bring into their lives the kingdom of God's love, just as we have that kingdom of love in our lives. Perhaps we know a person who is different, someone on the outer fringes of fitting in, someone who society calls an outcast. Perhaps there's a person like this that we should visit Perhaps there's a person like this we should call. Perhaps there's a person like this we should invite to our next social function. Perhaps there's a person like this that we should acknowledge the next time we see them, him or her. Perhaps there is someone we've ignored, someone we should extend our hand to in friendship and acceptance. Perhaps there is someone like this we should let know that they are important and that we love them and that God loves them too. Is there someone? Think about it. 
So it is written. So it is done. Amen. Our responding hymn is hymn number 268, Crown Him with Many Crowns. You may be seated. Will the ushers please come forward? Today we give thanks and recognize the generosity of our congregation. The morning offering will now be received. Rockville Presbyterian Church is blessed by many people who give countless hours of their time, share their talents, and financially support our church. 
Over the past several weeks, many members have made a pledge of financial support for this coming year. Today, we recognize and dedicate those financial commitments. Would you please join me in the responsive prayer in the bulletin as we dedicate our gifts to God and the work of RPC? We dedicate our gifts to you, O oh God. We dedicate our pledges to you, O oh God. Our leaders, as we prepare for the coming. Use us, O oh God, to do your work in this world. We pray over these gifts, blessing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <coughs> Sir John Sergiff of Constat writes this, prayer is the constant feeling the recognition of our infirmity or spiritual poverty. It is the sanctification of our soul, the foretaste of future blessedness, the angelic bliss. It is the heavenly rain, refreshing, watering, and fertilizing the ground of our souls. Prayer, he says, is the power and strength of the soul and body the purifying and freshening of the mental air, the enlightening of our countenance. Prayer, he says, is the joy of the spirit, the golden link that unites us to God. In our prayers of the people this morning, let us fertilize the ground of our souls and let us link our thoughts and our spirits to God. After each petition, I will say in the quietness of our hearts, O oh God, hear our prayers, and then we'll have a little moment of silence for you to reflect and silently offer your own petition. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for all good, high, and noble purposes that have used us and by which we have been moved to do right, creating beauty, loving others, and making our world a better place in which to live. In the silence of our hearts, O oh God, hear our prayers. We pray for those men and women at work in the complexities of our social order, for police officers who help the frightened with assistance and protect the angry from themselves. For those on the front lines as this pandemic continues, for physicians who diagnose disease and use their skills to promote health, for factory workers and office personnel who perform much needed but routine and repetitious tasks, for legislators who enact laws and for judges who interpret them for the betterment of all. For all persons who work long hours in honorable labor, we pray that they may find value both in what they do and in who they are. In the silence of our hearts, O oh God, hear our prayers. We pray for those encompassed with the most perplexing problems, for whom no solution comes without pain and no alternatives without risk. Undergird those who must face necessary surgeries, terminal illnesses, or both. Calm those who must plan a funeral. Strengthen those who struggle to stay sober from their addictions and those who in sobriety struggle to stay sane. In the silence of our hearts, O oh God, hear our prayers.
We pray for persons who taste life's bitter edge and struggle to cope. For those who are hungry, those who are homeless, those who seek a job in order to provide for their family, for those numbed by depression, for those in prison, for those who daily face racism, discrimination, and homophobia, for those who are alienated by loneliness, and for those who are different. In the silence of our hearts, O oh God, hear our prayers. Loving God, we remember before you with grateful hearts the men and women of our country who in their days of decision ventured much for the liberties we now enjoy. And we remember and pray now for the men and women who find themselves in the areas of war and for their families who wait for their safe return. Grant them perseverance in their tasks until all hostilities and wars are ended and all people with many voices will be united in one course of peace. In the silence of our hearts, O oh God, hear our prayers. We pray for this church for our forthcoming pastor, for our elders and our deacons, for those who bless us with music, for our lay leaders, for those who minister to us with greetings as we enter the church and minister to us with refreshments following worship, for those who educate and teach our children, and for those who work behind the scenes and are often overlooked and not recognized. In the silence of our hearts, O oh God, hear our prayers. We pray, O oh God, for ourselves. Receive our prayers of gratitude for the gift of personality, for the uniqueness with which we are made and the giftedness with which others express who they are. We thank you for people who bless us in our daily lives and who cause us to think. We thank you for friends who are always there for us, and we thank you for those who love us unconditionally. In the silence of our hearts, O oh God, hear our prayers. We lift to you wholeness of life, the listed concerns of this congregation. Embrace with wellness and healing of body, mind, and spirit, Maxine Morgan, Howie Young and family, Bob Taylor, Nancy Webbert, Marissa, great-granddaughter of Betty Harba, David Reddy and Verlin Morton, Karen Doty's husband, Flora Beers, Beth McDonald, Landfair, Marty Howman, Bill Landfair, and Ann Pluckett. In the silence of our hearts, O oh God, hear our prayers. In all these goodnesses, O oh loving God, from sunrise to sunset and all through the night, we express our thankfulness that you have heard our prayers. Hear us now as we lift our voices in unison, saying that prayer that your Son, Jesus Christ, taught us, our Father, who art in heaven. Holy thy kingdom come. Our 
who leads not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our oh, opportunities for service yes. and fellowship. Just a couple of reminders, um, and these are all listed in the announcements. And I believe we actually have an announcement from the floor, so feel free. Okay, thanks for that. Yes, yes, I will. Um, yes, so what, what was shared is that Maxine Morgan um, is declining, um, and that's the reason in part that the family has gathered um, to be with them, this, to be together this week. Um, so we will, we will be thinking about you and, and hope that that her exit from this earth is a good one. So thank you for sharing that. Wow, in addition, um, how do you, it's hard to, to move off of that, but come on people, we need fellowship, right? What does it take to bring a, a grocery store strudel <laughs> to, to church? So. Uh, and I say that to myself too. It, it's so easy, and we can share just by signing up, and and making it happen, making uh, um, you know all of all of the the fun of it. Uh, Bob has something to share. Well, it's difficult to do this after listening to Bill. Or right. Yes. Uh, I should come in as a testament to all of the, the good work uh, that we did yesterday. So thank you. All thank of you who showed up and, and all of you who support us in, in this mission. You took the words right out of my mouth because I saw it on your Facebook post. Uh, so uh, I, Bob uh, shares the, uh, the, the, just the joy of being together and doing good work together that was had yesterday with the fall cleanup. Um, and it, it, you know, it, the, it, the place looks amazing on the outside, and uh, I know they had a good time. So thank you for leading that. Um, the session is, I want to just thank you for your patience uh, with the session. There is a lot of good work being done now to call our next pastor. Uh, <laughs> interviews continue. We're looking for the right person and uh, the right fit. And that always doesn't happen. Sometimes it magically happens, but oftentimes it, it just it takes a while. So um, we, are, uh, we are working diligently to make that happen. Our next meeting is a week from this coming Wednesday. And then finally, uh, the Tuesday morning group is getting together uh, as, as it's indicated in the bulletin. Ann or Bernice would really appreciate getting your RSVPs um, by noon on Monday, a week from tomorrow. So thank you. Oh, I'm supposed to announce the sending hymn. The sending hymn is hymn 263. And if you'll stand for this, the singing of this hymn. <laughs>
we actually rejoice for the shepherd who is out those doors that God is going to select to pastor to this flock. It's coming. Let us go as inheritors of God's promises. Let us go as inheritors of Jesus' grace. Let us, let us go as inheritors of Spirit's peace. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.